Hello, everyone. This is Grim. Ender's with me as well. We're doing a quick audio check. Check, check, jiggity, check. Check. One, two, three. Everyone can hear us okay, hopefully. Let us know in chat if we're coming in five by five. Sangroper says all good. All right, perfect. Can't confirm it's all good. Good deal. All right, everyone. We'll be back in just a few minutes for the start of the show. Hello, everyone. Can uh, Hopefully, everybody can hear us. Hopefully, we're coming in loud and clear. Welcome to another episode of Star Jump Station. I am here with my good buddy, Ender. I'm obviously pointing the wrong direction. I always get that wrong. Yes, you are. It's uh, Hold on. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Did I get it right? Nope. See? <laughs> Missed it. <laughs> we um, both just... We, we're done. Uh, for everyone saying love the galaxy, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, Grim was kind enough to change my ship from my MSR to the Galaxy. Yep. Um, yeah. 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 Yep. So it's another episode of Star Jump Fleet or 
Star Jump. It's another episode of Star Jump Fleet Viewer. Ender. Um, this is going real well. I probably shouldn't have had that drink start. before we start. before we started you, the episode. Yeah. Remind me yeah. to start doing that after. Yep. Uh, no, sure. it's another episode of Star Jump Station. Just as good to be totally honest with you. Uh, we don't have VMXEO with us tonight. We don't have Starlet with us tonight, but we do have Ender and myself, Grim. Uh, we're going to talk about 318 and a few other little things. Going to be probably a shorter show, but that's okay. Um, you know, we're wanting to hang out with the community and all that type of good stuff. Um, but I'm going to pass it over to Ender real quick. Ender, what have you been doing this weekend? This uh, week, this last weekend? Because it's, it's been two weeks since the Star Jump Station, right? It has. It okay. has. Yeah. So. Applying to jobs, getting prepped for um, uh, a couple of uh, <clears throat> new uh, fleet builders. You know, we, we've been kind of getting the numbers and uh, trying to get on Star Citizen as much as possible. As much as possible. Uh, and playing Sons of the Forest when yes, can, which is always fun. Which we've been having a lot of fun with. Um, if you haven't it's checked out Sons of the Forest, that, that may be one you want to look at. We've actually been having a good time with it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still an alpha. It's still some, I think there's some things they need to adjust, but they're sure. on a real good path. A real good path to be a, a solid game. It's a really, really great start. Especially, I mean, visually, it's just a beautiful game. Yeah. One of the best um, environments they've, they've I think well. I've ever seen God, in yeah, a video the, game, the and it's wind, water, yeah. it's and it's not just heart, it's planet. not just like oh the rocks look good or this. It's like everything coming together, like mm-hmm. it comes alive. Like it's it's yeah. pretty pretty amazing. Um, yeah. But yeah, I've been playing some Sons of the Force. Um, it's been a couple weeks since we had a Star Jump station. I think we skipped a week, if I remember correctly. We did. And the reason we did that, and we were supposed to be on last sun this past Sunday. The reason we did that is if you don't know, we put out our new Star Jump show, which is called Shipyard, uh, to our YouTube channel. Um, if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. It's been doing really well. It's almost to forty thousand views in just seven days. We really yeah. appreciate all of you. Um, uh, for supporting us. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about shipyard here in just a little bit. Um, but we got a lot of people in chat tonight. Appreciate everyone coming out to hang out with us. We're already getting a pretty good crowd. So everyone in chat, thanks for supporting us. Um, I know station is not like a weekly every week type of thing, but we appreciate, uh, when all of you, um, you know, come out, see us when when you're able to see us and all that type of good stuff hang out with us when we can our you know our premiere dates shift a little bit sometimes but um that being said like i said a little bit shorter show tonight but that's that's not a problem we're gonna have a good time there's some new cinematic cig released obviously we have 318 hitting the live servers we're going to talk a little bit about that we'll talk a little bit about shipyard uh for those of you that have been tuning in the last few weeks, you know that we're running a poster giveaway contest, and um, and oh, thank you, I appreciate that. And uh, <laughs> with the band hammer, uh, <laughs> many of you know we've been running the um, Star Jump Fleet Viewer poster giveaway. We have our first set of winner- winners. We're going to announce those tonight. Um, those were. Pre, yeah, yeah, sorry, winners is, is going great. Those winners were chosen, uh, pre selected, uh, before the show in a random drawing, um, from both YouTube and Twitch. Um, Moving forward, we're going to do those live on the show, uh, but for setup purposes for this episode, uh, we just did a random drawing. Um, in the pre-show and got that squared away. So we'll announce that tonight. We have a ton of these posters to give away. So do not worry if you do not win one, the first, second, third, 18th round, we got a ton of these posters. <laughs> so your chances, chances of getting a poster are very, very Real high. good. Real yeah, yeah. good. So, um, he has enough to do this a hundred times. Yes. So. Yes. Very much so. Um, all right. I'm going to switch this over here. I set up some new windows here. Again, it's only me and Andrew tonight. So um, let me move, remove that. I'm going to remove a few things. Okay. So we have a few things to go over tonight. Um, first thing here, let me go through my list. Um, Andrew, anything you want to bring up before we get into the, the, the main topic? April, we are uh, uh, yep. starting our charity push uh, for St. Jude Play Live. Yep. Uh, I will be applying for everything April 1st. I think it actually starts more in May, but um, I do, you know, constant charity stuff. So I figured we would really start our push in April. Um, yep. And feel free to go over to my Twitch if you want. Uh I am making a push to get partner because my 
community or community has asked me to. Um, I, I, I'm going to do it as best I can, but no expectations. Hopefully Let's I'll make it. Hopefully. Do what we can to help Ender. Again, uh, remember he does a lot of that charity <clears> stuff <throat> and getting to partner will help push the charity stuff kind higher. Of and the it's, yeah. main reason I decided to do it because it could help the charity and I'm all about helping those charities. Yeah. Um, um, he did release those wallpapers, Blood Tide. They are on our um, uh, uh, they're on our Discord. Put them in the Discord. I'll, yeah, I'll have add a, you in the channel. It's add. Yeah, we have a new um, channel called Star Jump Creative. That's just going to be mm -hmm. stuff Star Jump creates, wallpapers and whatnot. VMXEO might throw some stuff in there too. Mm -hmm. uh, but I put all the current wallpapers in there. There's a few more that are done that I haven't released yet. Those will probably go to Patreon first, stay there for a two, couple days, and then go to that creative uh, Discord as well. So, um, and I'm going to start doing more sizes and formats. I think it was Sean Solo from our YouTube has requested several times for some of these posters to be in like ultra, ultra widescreen format and yeah. stuff like that, which is totally fine. I just need to render them out at the appropriate resolution, the appropriate aspect ratio. So that will definitely happen. Um, okay, let's uh, jump right into it. Um, Real quick, want to remind everyone that CitizenCon is coming October 21st. Uh, later this year is going to be in person in Los Angeles, Woo! California. For those that are excited, I believe our very own VMXEO will be out there uh, working with JRDF, uh, who he does contract work with. So JRDF will be out there representing. Um, still unsure if I'm going to be able to go. It's October's a really tricky time for me. It's when my daughter's birthday, my father's birthday, and a bunch of other crap is happening. Um, so it is a very tricky time, and Los Angeles is a very long way. So <laughs> uh, we'll have to see if that can way. happen. But regardless, I, what I can assure everyone is even if Star Jump is not there in any real official capacity, um, we, I, you know, me and Ender still have to talk, but I have no doubt we're, we want to do some big, if we don't go, we want to do some big, digital star jump hang out with us yes. live stream event maybe yeah. we'll tie it in with a charity or something we'll we'll, we'll do something we got some time yeah. leading up to that um but anyway that's 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 where we're at right now with citizen con but again it's coming i think it's going to be a pretty exciting one a pretty big one so yeah i think something something big's coming with this one i don't yep. know what yeah but something big's coming with it. i agree okay real quick um Let's talk about the other thing we released. We talked a little bit about this at the beginning of the show. We released our first episode of uh, Star Jump Shipyard, which is a new show. It kind of focuses on, a, it takes a ship, generally concept ship, and it sort of deep dives it. It doesn't really give you any unknown information, but what it tries to do is pull all known information from multiple sources, bring that mm -hmm. together into one, one video. And the idea is, is it's not promoting the ship, and it's not, you know, telling you to not get the ship. It's it's really trying to be unbiased and and just give you all the facts about a ship. It's pros, it's cons, um, maybe some issues we 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 feel it has. We lay it all out for you, and then you can take that video and use it to hopefully make a decision to pass on a ship or to make a ship uh, purchasing game goal for you, or maybe you do want to, you know, pledge for it. Um, so either way, the first episode was uh, really successful, it actually went beyond my expectations. I think we're getting close to 40,000 views. So again, thank you everyone for supporting that, liking it, um, subscribing to the YouTube channel because of it. Um, we have already started, um, working on episode two of Shipyard. I know a lot of people have been asking what's the next ship. I can say that we will generally focus on unreleased ships because those are the ships people need maybe some um, you know, help in making the decision on whether it's something they want to invest in. So um, the next episode, and, and sometimes the ship decisions will be based a little bit off request, but sometimes on at least at the next couple episodes, it's going to be based off what we have the most visuals already queued up for because Remember, we've built a lot of visuals already for a lot of this stuff. Yep. So the next episode of Star Jump Fleet Viewer is going to be on the Endeavor. We're going to be doing the Endeavor. Big ship. It's a popular ship. It's one that is brought up a lot. Um, we're going to cover the base ship. 
Uh, we're going to cover every single module. We may even do a slight reconcepting of it to show where CIG can perhaps take the ship in the future when it eventually does get reconcepted. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're going to, again, we're going to deep dive every single module, the gameplay associated with it, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and then, you know, I, 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 I think the Endeavor video, while the Endeavor is a little trickier than the Kraken because it's a lot of really old concept stuff, it'll be mostly the same format as the first episode of, of Shipyard, but there's going to be some changes just because not every ship has the same amount of data available. But because this is a Star Jump production we're doing a ton of new visuals for it so this thing's going to be chock full of really cool um endeavor endeavor you know visuals so um i know a couple of people asking for the band new merchant man definitely the merchant man will get done at some point it might be episode three it might be episode four um we do have some really cool visuals of the Merchant Man queued up, so I don't think it'll be long before we get to it. And, I, and obviously, we know it's a popular ship. Um, so, you know, the Crucible, the Polaris, the Merchant Man, all those ships are going to get tackled. Another one will be the Vulcan. I know a lot of people are excited about the Vulcan. So, again, we're going to get to all those. We're going to get to all those. So, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, real quick, Graham, yes. I just sent you a message. Need to know real quick if that was you. It was uh, a response on one of our videos. Response on one of our videos. Let's see. Um, I no, no. You can ax that, Next. Ender. Right. Thank you. Sir. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but um, yeah, you can assure we're going to get through all these ships. I love talking ships. I love deep diving them. So we're going to get to a lot of them. Uh, yeah, Jack Cop. We're, we're Nautilus, hundred percent. I own a Nautilus. Love the Nautilus. So we're we're definitely going to get to it. Um, okay, it's talk. It's time to talk about kind of get into our main topic um 318 it released to the live servers yes um did. i'm gonna pop up real quick just kind of a lot of the features that are in 318 um cig did release a um a kind of a cinematic trailer for 318 called lasting legacies we're going to take a look at that and then um after that we will react to it um and Talk about 318, how the launch has been going, our expectations, and where we see this all kind of all, all netting out here over the next few days to a few weeks. So real quick, we're going to switch over to our React format here, and we're going to kick in 3.18 Lasting Legacy. So here we go. Is that not? Oh, I didn't have the volume on. Stand by, everyone. It's just it's all it's good. Got no volume here. This should fix it. Got it turned down a little bit. Hopefully, people can hear us talk above it a bit. Yeah. Obviously, Pico hinting towards PES. Ice Jester says he was able to play for three hours tonight without problems. That's great to hear, Jester. I've found a workaround for getting into the game, and I just can't play. Unfortunately, I can't even pull this ship. Uh, yeah. So we'll get there. Secrets of Daymar is something I'm definitely going to have to explore more. I had one yes. bad trip there. <laughs> we did. We did. You jumped down a hole. I did, yes. Yes. Yeah. Crazy. Have you been in the new sand caves? I guess we'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, put a pin in that. I have not. You know. This is another thing I haven't experienced in 318 security post career. I haven't been there yet. Me either. Forty-five oh eight. Yeah. I think we're also seeing a little bit of the new rendering tech here. Uh, some people have commented that things look a smidge better. Scott, I absolutely love the music for this. A whole bunch of great features.
All right. Switch back to our window here. So we have a lot of features, 318. Um, it was probably one of the biggest patches to release that I've been around for. Um, I yeah. was not around for the live release of 3.0, which I know was a big, you know, kind of a big Me transition either. moment. Um, but would you agree, Ender? Is this kind of the biggest patch? You, I mean, I guess it's same for you because you've been started yeah, at the same it's time. The biggest so. since, since we started playing. Yeah. Um, it's a lot. And it's it's a lot of good stuff to see coming into the game. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. You know, I think the elephant in the room, obviously, is 3.18 has been a rough launch. Um, the game has been down, I would say, for a majority of people um, for, you know, the last several days. Um, however, what has been very apparent, if you've been following CIG's, um, you know, uh, social media posts and stuff is that they've had people on this from minute one working on it, yeah. working the problem. Um, they actually just released a message uh, just a little bit ago that showed that um, they're back now to, to it's somewhat stable. There's still some issues, but um, I've been hearing from a lot of people that they're now able to get in with no problem, play the game, um, you know, still errors occasionally, but, but I'm hearing from a lot of people just in the last two hours that they've really been able to start playing the game again. That's awesome to hear. Uh, but for me personally, I think that, um, I personally was not surprised by any of this. Ender knows I have a, I have a, I have a long standing, I've kind of a long standing um, thing about patches is that when a patch comes out, I am pretty much under the understanding that it's I'm not playing for the first day or two. It's just right. the way I am. A lot of times I don't even attempt to log on. But, you know, if you remember back to um, the beginning of last year, um, Chris Roberts, he really told us this was going to happen again. And, and yeah. what I'm saying all here is not to defend the launch in any way. I don't want people to think that I'm white knighting too hard here. But they really warned us about all this. <laughs> they kind yeah, of said, you know, they they told us, um, they straight up told us, CR did, that this was going to be a rough launch. They told us that last, um, you know, just as recently as, uh, what was it, the last, uh, right before it went to the live servers, Jared warned us. Um, and Zylo or Jake, I think, did a post warning us. But going all the way back to the beginning of, of um, the year, of last year. Yeah which is damn near 12 months at this point, CR said yep. in the letter from the chairman that 318 was going to be a prolonged, bumpy road. So <clears> I, was, I was prepared. And Der, what, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, I was pretty ready for it. Um, it's why I've been so calm. Um, yeah. The time that I have gotten in, I got to be honest, I, it's nice to see uh, the community not burning people at the stake constantly. Uh, now I know yeah. out of game, there's a lot of roughness from community members, right? Um, towards C C C I G. Yeah. Um, but in game, you know, there was a guy that said, "I'm brand new to the game. I'm assuming I picked a really bad time to <laughs> get into this." And right. somebody like responded immediately and was like, "Yeah, you did, but." If you just be patient with CIG, uh, you're going to be really happy with your choice to come into the game. And other people started chiming in and, and, and saying, yeah, you're really going to enjoy it. Just you've got to be patient. So there's a lot of people that are exceedingly patient. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been getting into the game. I found a workaround to get into the game, but I can't pull ships to me. So if, if last... I don't have a ship... When was the last time you attempted? I was in just earlier today, actually. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, about two and a half hours ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, roughly two and a half hours ago, but I wasn't able to actually play. Yeah. Um, I, if, but I can get into the game without fail, even though the, I get trying to join the 66 0015 or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I found a workaround to get actually into the game. I mean, I think. Part of the thing to do whenever this sort of stuff happens is to always f reframe any disappointment with what the positive is, right? You always have yeah. to reframe it that way and then fall, hopefully fall somewhere in the middle. And for me specifically, um, if I reframe it as if this had just been a, any old patch, right? 
maybe it's a big patch, but not, but just more fluff material, some ships, maybe some caves and things like that, then I actually would understand the the kind of the anger a bit more, right? But if you reframe it in the in the thinking that this patch brought with it fundamental core tech that makes server meshing and many other things possible. Without this piece of core tech, the other stuff will never happen. They've said that multiple times. So yeah. this patch is very much like, you know, server object container streaming or any of those technologies that came on board. This is a fundamental piece of core tech. And if you were to th- if you were to sit back and just have a general conversation with someone and say, "Man, what is the one type of thing you could put on the servers that would really make the servers just explode?" I have a feeling most people would say, "Oh, uh, persistency and the ability to just drop anything every everywhere all the time." <laughs> <laughs> like if you were to try to think of a piece of tech that you could put in the game that would cause issues, this is the tech that in my mind would be like the problem, the problem child. So again, no, no surprise for me whatsoever. Um, but the funny thing is, is what bits I have been able to get in and play, I've actually seen some really cool um, persistent entity streaming you know, situations arrive, things that would only come about because that technology is in place. And, and it's really, and it's always really cool moments. Okay. It's, it's like, it's just like, um, you know, the first time you go from space down to planet side all in one go, it's just, there's a, there's these moments now that keep popping up when I play them. I'm like, Oh shit, that's, that's really cool. And again, it being core tech, I think anytime CIG can do that is a, is a good thing. And if it takes them a month to get this stabilized, it takes a month. I actually think it'll yeah. be stabilized by the end of this week. Um, I think so. Or somewhere around there. But honestly, with a patch this big, I personally would have been okay with them delaying it even further if they needed to. I don't sure. necessarily need the quarter release quarterly releases to stay on track for core tech. Yeah. I just want to see progress, right? And... PES coming in the game is a huge bit of progress. Um, Absolutely. But, you know, as you see here from the patch 318 list, that, I mean, that's that's just one element that came on board. You know, we had a lot of them. Pretty much all teams were at play here. We had, yeah. um, uh, you know, the the team working on graphics with the Gen 12 scene render. We have environmental people working on Damar crash site, the racetracks, rivers, new sand caves, support. Security Post Korea. We have the mission team coming in and doing stuff like um, the missions in Sur- uh, Security Post Korea, the the prison activities, new missions in Orison, all that stuff. And then you had an entire gameplay loop come on board with Salvage, yep. at least the whole scraping aspect of it. But then you saw them flex a little bit on the time trial race stuff that they put into game. Again, yeah. so when you look at it from that position. It's not only a patch that brought in Cortec, but it's a patch where almost every developer team is touching it in some way. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And, and that's really impressive uh, for 318. I think it's a big accomplishment. They got it out. Again, remember, while they are significantly late on releasing 318, that was known. We understood that. Um, any thoughts, Ender, on 318 and its its expectations going forward. How do you, how long do you think we're going to be in the 318 cycle? Um, and, and, you know, I, a lot of people are saying that 319 will, will be kind of um, the Invictus thing, or do you see that actually being some sort of 318.1 or actually it won't be 0.1 because they'll come out with that soon, but a 0.2 patch yeah. or something. How do you, uh, do you think we're going to sit in the 318 cycle for longer than we think? I, I, I do. I think that uh, that this is going to be a long testing cycle. Now, yep. that doesn't mean that we're not going to get point one, point two, but I, I do think that it's going to be updates for things like you know uh, uh, the ship shows and, and all of yep. that. I don't think we are going to see three nineteen uh, this year. Yeah. Um, personally, I think that we might see it next year, but I I hope. We don't see it this year. I hope that for they, which patch, uh, three eighteen, uh, or three nineteen. Excuse 319. me. I hope that we stay with it this year, three eighteen, mm-hmm. and we go through the paces with what we've got, the new updates. Yeah, maybe add some new ships and stuff. But I don't want to see us rush three nineteen. Uh, 
because I would love to see a patch not come out smoothly, but happen more smoothly, yeah. you know, and have more to it because the more the patches have to them, the happier people are going to be. Yeah. Um, uh, it's so, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm eyeballing 319 for probably like, yeah, well, it depends on how, how, how far they want to say. I, I, I know that I think they may have said 319 was the Invictus patch. That seems awfully rushed for the 318 cycle. And I, and Blood Tide, you might be right. 319 might be using the same code base as 318. I can't remember if they said that. But regardless, 319 might just be minor things added to 318 it might be the invictus stuff it yeah. might be uh, you know a new ship or two it might be just some more minor stuff i forget what's on the on the roadmap uh release view for 319 but they might keep it minor stuff um yeah what I, we it, but however i could see 319 getting delayed to the fall and them staying yeah. in the 318 code or or literally the 318 patch cycle just through invictus and they'll just do a point two patch or something yeah. to get us into Invectus. Um, I don't know, but I'm, I'm really interested to see how that plays out. You know, I've had, I I, a lot of people think, you know, patch 320 will be the IE patch and stuff. So I think 318 kind of threw a wrench in everyone's expectations, uh, you know, in terms of the release cycle because 318 threw yeah. us off. Um, I'm, I'm hoping they stick with 318. Um, you know, Lorville yeah. 2.0, I think is right. what's 319. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even that they said they were hoping this year. Um, and, and so that'd be great, you yeah. know, but I'd love it to, I want them to be sure before they push to it. Sure. Sure. I don't want to get 319, go to Lorville because I'm going to want to see it. Yeah. Uh, and then be trapped uh, yeah. because of any kind of bugs. It's, it's going to be a bad day. Yeah. I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. I think, I, I do think from what I've heard, 319 was originally planned to be the Invictus patch. I think we're going to have to see because I think there's still a lot up in the air with 318, even on CAG side, where they're going to have to play it by yeah. ear a little bit. Um, yeah. So, uh, real quick, uh, the Ice Jesters, thank you for that follow earlier. And A. Freeland, thank you for that follow. Really, really appreciate it. Um, that's a good time for us to segue really quick before we move on to, with other 318 stuff um, to the poster giveaway. We've been announcing this on several shows. Um, don't forget, all you have to do is subscribe on YouTube. Um, or sorry, subscribe on the YouTube channel and follow us on Twitch. And yep. as long as you've done that within the last, uh, or as long as you do that, or if you've already followed or subscribed, as long as you've been active watching one of our episodes or been in chat in the last 60 days, you're automatically entered to win one of these posters. I have it right here. Really nice, cool uh, Star Jump Fleet Viewer poster. It has, let me hold it up, has all the ships to scale. It's pretty cool. Um, again, all you have to do is follow or subscribe, depending on which channel you're on. You can do it on both as well, and you get entered twice. Um, we do have the first five winners. I'll be showing those in just a bit. There's Ender holding up his poster. Dex Trenchcoat, thank you for that follow. Really appreciate it. Salute to you. Thanks to everyone um, for supporting us like you do. Again, we'll get to those winners here shortly. All right, let's move on a bit. Oh, Pog Knuckles with the follow. Thank you so much, Pog Knuckles. Um, all right. Next, let's talk about the next thing, and this kind of related to um, to salvaging. We have a new ship to talk about. Everyone knows we love talking about ships. Uh, we're going to take a look at the Drake Vulture cinematic here, and then we'll talk a little bit about the Vulture because we both uh, got some experiences with that ship. Yeah. Right, let's hit it up. Oh, I see here we wreck, go. And I just see a bunch of junk. They did a really good job on the cinematic. I mean, it makes you want to go salvage. I hope we get some really dense salvage fields like this in the future. Me too. I, th I think we're going to see this more in like places uh, like yeah. Nix and Pyro. Where yeah. There's a lot of space for it. Yeah. Or maybe when they, you know, they talked about those salvage claim missions you're going to be able to take soon i think in 319 yep. maybe um i would love if those are like special areas that are kind of dense or have unique stuff going on not just like a yeah. 600 eye floating there you know the so the only thing uh, just a second ago they showed um see him cutting out the the, the component that's pretty cool that shows future yeah. uh or the cargo that shows a little bit of future yeah. stuff i like that yep the only thing that that confused me was it's showing the vulture pushing back the other 
uh, boxes. Mm-hmm. But obviously, right now we only have the one box that comes out, and then we have to move, which is not a bad thing. Yeah, um, let me meet the I like the break where you go down, move everything, come back mm-hmm. up. It kind of breaks up the monotony a little bit. You're not only yeah. doing the one thing. I heard some. Um, I heard someone kind of say it actually feels more like a two player ship, and I and I get what they're saying. It kind of does. Yeah. I, but here's the here's the genius of it, and it's almost why I wish the prospector had a little bit of this going on, is that you can totally do it solo, yep. it keeps you active, but at the same time, um, you could have a second person in and speed your gameplay up, and that seems like a yep. nice offset. Now, one thing I will say is... One of the reasons I think they made the vulture to where you manually have to go down there and to move boxes is because salvage does seem to be a bit more of a um, passive gameplay loop, in my opinion. I think you'd agree, Ender. And I think because it's so passive, they almost like had to get you out of your seat to do something every once in yeah. a while. Because yeah. the flip side is the prospector. I don't really think mining in the prospector is very passive. You really kind of have to be on the ball. You, you know, you're managing you your power you're envelope. Up and, if you don't, you're, yeah. you're managing your power. You're you're constantly doing something there. Yeah, and um, I and the so more yeah. I the more I got to thinking about it, though, I thought I was thinking that's the trade off. That's that. You know what I mean? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, but yeah, so I uh, pledge for Vulture. Uh, finally got it. I've been really enjoying the ship. I love getting out there and and doing uh, some really cool stuff with it. You can see right here um, in the part of the cinematic, it uses its little tractor beams and it pulls stuff into its mulcher grinder thing. So I saw someone said, uh, PQ Knuckles on YouTube said, Star Jump the Vulture got munching too, right? It absolutely does. Um, it's going to be able to munch, do the whole munching. And then obviously you can drop the ramp, get out of the Vulture, go yep. cut a component out of a ship and put that in the cargo bay. So the Vulture can is supposed to be able to do all aspects of salvaging the only um exception to that and i'm and i don't know either way is i don't know if the vulture will be able to siphon you know siphoning is like siphoning the gases and stuff up is a form of salvage what would be cool is if you if you siphon up um you know whatever the fuels and stuff like that instead of a rcm box pushing out of the compactor, some sort of like fuel tank comes out. I think that would be kind of cool. Um, so you could store the fuel tanks or the RCM boxes, RMC, it's R- RMC, I believe, RMC boxes, whatever. Um, yeah. I think that would be cool. It's also possible that the Vulture will not do siphoning. We, we don't know. Bingo also uh, says, don't forget the breaching charges. Yeah, that's another thing we haven't heard a lot about. Um, hopefully, CIG, I'm sure we'll hear about that from CIG at some point here, the breaching charges, which are a part of salvage to help break up ships and make them yep. easier to, to haul munch, I believe. So, yeah. Um, any closing thoughts on the Vulture, Ender, before we move on to the next ship? Um, I, I, I was pleasantly surprised that i felt the need to sorry i'm having to close stuff my daughter left open uh i felt the need to get a vulture uh you know me i like a lot of different gameplay styles i'm looking forward to a few salvage was one i didn't expect to enjoy as much as i did your testing of it and then me getting in game and and actually performing salvage with you Mm -hmm. really kind of gave me a bug to I really enjoyed it. So yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to using it. More, it's, it's uh, great gameplay. Later. If you're like watching a YouTube video and just chilling mm-hmm. out, but <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, real quick, Jack O'Neill in the chat, um, says that just a, a video two or go by CIG, they did state that the 319 will be on the 318, uh, code branch. Um, that's cool to hear. So yeah, it might end up being Invictus is the 319 patch. Um, if, if that's the case, I could see 320 being the one that, we really don't see till IAE, to be honest with you. I could totally see that being the reality. Um, uh, and then 319 sitting, you know, for testing all throughout the summer and stuff. Yeah. I, I could definitely see that happening. So, um, all right. So we had another ship um, that was um, announced. This one was went straight to flyable. Um, and it's caused a little bit of controversy. I've, I've watched a lot of content on both sides of the fence, both very pro you know, and, and all for this ship and some very against. We're going to go back to our re screen. We'll watch the cinematic for it. Now, real quick. So 
obviously we're talking about the Scorpius Centauris, and it's got a really cool trailer that picks up in this battle where the Scorpiuses are going after this Kraken that's coming into the system, right? A lot of you may remember that the original Scorpius, not the Antares, but the original Scorpius had a trailer that had some of that in it too. Well, someone on YouTube, I'll be honest with you, I can't credit them because I've already lost the channel, sorry, did a, a re-edit from both cinematics into one cinematic, and it's amazing how well Ooh. it cuts together. We're going to watch that right now. That's the trailer I got for you. It's the Scorpius yes. plus the Scorpius Antari super cut edit. Really, really cool. We're going to watch that right now. You'll see some of these scenes from the original Scorpius trailer. Ah, and the Antares. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Cut together. Oh, it does cut together really and it, well. The shots cut together back and forth, too. So some are Scorpius, then Antares and Scorpius. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. They did a really nice edit. I will get that original link. Yes. I will get it. Yes, it's on YouTube. Scorpius and Scorpius and Terry's super cut, super edit, something like that. Pretty cool. I love the way they cut together. Um, it worked out really well. Um, I watched that though and I was just like, oh my God, this like totally works. I mean, you can tell they did the trailers at the same time. Um, so what this shows is that the Antares had been planned. Um, it yep. had totally been planned. Here we go. Antares, yep. super cut. Did you find it? I think. No, cool. No. no wait a minute. Maybe. Oh, crap. Yes. No. Yeah, Alf, it, it probably isn't allowing links, but um, I will definitely repost that. I might be able to look right now. Yeah. As a, matter of fact, um, as a matter of fact, I think I have it here. Stand by, stand by. Uh, yep, I've found it. Is it the one by Certified Gumbo? Uh, stand by. I'm about to have it. Yep, did I find it? Did I find it? I may not have found it. Oh, yep, I found it. I found it. All right, I'm going to post this now. Let me grab the link, and I'll post it in both channels. Actually, Ender, I'm going to send it to you, and maybe you can yep. post it out for me. There's the link to where I pulled it from. Give that person a bit of a nod, obviously, in their channel. I thought it was a really nice edit. Thank you, Ender, for posting that. Um this one is just citizen things. I actually don't know who did the edit. I don't know if it was this person or if it was um, someone else. I don't know. I don't know if anyone's claiming a, a re-edit of it. But again, amazing how well they cut together. Let's talk about the ship real quick, though. Uh, Scorpius um, and Terry's, um, obviously based off the Scorpius uh, standard variant, they removed the quad turret that's on rails. They have replaced that with um, essentially a quantum snare and a dampener, right? Yes. Am I correct yes. in that? It's yeah. got both. So. Yeah. Um, the big, you know, kind of to do with this ship is that it um, is, is that it requires two people really to be able to use it to its full functionality. Your second backseat person um, is going to be the person controlling all the, the quantum snaring and dampening and all that good stuff. So the, the issue is, is that people say, well, um, having the second person in the backseat doing nothing is kind of stupid. You know, the obvious argument with that is I go back to that engineering brief that they just put out the other week, which we're also going to talk a little bit about. That engineering brief 
to me showed that your second your second seater, you know, the guy sitting in back, girl sitting in back, handling all that stuff, is going to be dealing with that stuff, but also acting as your your in real time tuner. You know what I mean? Yeah. Possibly yeah. handling some engineering duties uh, yep. through the MFDs. I really don't see. I don't, based off everything I saw with engineering, and again, we will go with that. I don't really see a lot of like boring or dead spots on ships anymore. I think there's going to be, I if either. anything, you know, there's concerns about engineering being too active of a gameplay loop. Could be. Um, yeah. But, anyways, Ender, what's your thoughts on the Antares? I, I know I you were a fan of the Scorpius, right? I was, I was, I, I, I only, <laughs> I sadly traded mine in, but I will get it in game. Um, Sting it, here says EMP and ships. dampener. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, it's, it's one of my favorite, uh, uh, ships. I very much enjoy it. I, I think that, uh, the original Scorpius is, is just a fun ship. I very much enjoy the Antares. Yeah. Um, I haven't gotten to fly it. I haven't gotten to co-pilot it. I don't know, you know, exactly how it works because I haven't physically done it. But no. um, in all honesty, I don't see a problem with the current loadout and the way it works from what I've heard from others. Yeah. Um, you know, the co-pilot has control of both the dampener and the EMP as they should. Uh, mm -hmm. the, none of this should be pilot controlled. Um, if it were, the ship would be far too OP. Yeah, uh, and It'd the pilot would have too much to do. Yeah, you're 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 looking at a ship that has four guns, God knows how many missiles. What sixteen missiles? Um, I'm not sure. This seems, I mean, I've, this seems I've, doing pretty good by itself. I've heard on some other content creators' videos though that they're saying that the the score the Antari still has pretty decent DPS uh, yeah. for I a heavy fighter. Would. So it would. Yeah. Um, I don't think that the pilot needs any of the controls the co-pilot has. Yeah. And I don't think the co-pilot needs any more controls because like you, uh, you know, I very much enjoyed uh, the information given uh, from this most recent uh, 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 inside star citizen uh, yeah. for the engineer. And I think it's going to be oh, so, so much better. So, Real quick, Phil, let me interrupt you. Jester Sheepy just said there's no MFD status indicator. So real quick on that, I 100% agree with you, Jester. And I actually say that on all ships. I don't think there's enough sure. MFD information available to Agreed. every MFD console throughout the ship. Um, I personally would like to be able to be in my Corsair or my Carrick and be in the cartography room and go up to the MFD sitting there and be able to pull up how my shields look. I want to, um, from every MFD, I'd like to access things based off permission. And here's, here's the good news about that though. Um, CIG is rebuilding all this MFD stuff. As a matter of fact, it's on the progress tracker. They're working through it now. I think work slated to end sometimes at the end of this year, they're working mm -hmm. through the MFD stuff, bringing that to building blocks. So all the MFD stuff's going to change. And I think the reason we're seeing the MFD stuff take so long is because it's not just pilot MFD stuff. I think it's going to exactly. be MFDs propagation throughout all MFD MFDs located throughout a ship, et cetera. Yep. Um, so, Based off that and based off that being rebuilt in building blocks, I think we're going to see a lot more control come to some of these second seats, co-pilot seats, engineering seats, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, and, and, and remember, the MFDs currently are – I don't think this is the end game for MFDs. I think we're oh, going to yeah, see a hell no, of a no, lot no. more. Yeah, I mean, they're um, they're doing a hell of a lot of work on MFDs. I mean, we're still using the old Flash MFDs, by the way. I mean, yeah. we're using yeah. way old tech. <laughs> so I do want to yeah. uh, stin Kira. It does not have the same weapons load as a Sabre. Uh, Maybe the guns. Um, if you – not if you make them not gimbaled. Um, but What's the saber it has so the saber has one, two, three, four size threes. Okay. Uh, you can not gimbal the uh Scorpius and end up with four size threes. Okay. Um, but the missile loadout for the saber is only four total size three missiles, whereas mm -hmm. you're dealing with 16 size two missiles for the Scorpius. It is a vast difference. Interesting. Um, okay. 
You've got many, many more. What's the saber? Uh, saber and medium, and that makes a huge difference. Um, uh, the saber is a uh, stealth fighter, just the yeah. just a standard. So it would be a medium fighter, I believe. Um, let's see. Yeah, guys, I think he's referring uh, to the missile difference. Yeah. Um, I'm referring to the missile difference. I know, like I just said, if you don't gimbal them, it will have the same guns, but the major difference is in the missiles, which yeah. do make a difference. Yeah. Not maybe now, but in the future, it will make a vast difference. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, this is one of those ships. I just recently watched a morphologist video. He just put Four out a, um, Not he eight. just put out a video called the most useless ships and star okay. citizen. Eight. And it was a good video. It was a it was a well thought out video by Morph. It, there was some stuff that I didn't totally agree with, but most of it I agree with. And it focused on this ship, the Cutlass Steel, the the Rock DS, um, the Cyclone MT, etc. And it either and the primary focus of this was that it was focusing on ships that made other ships obsolete, right? And so, for example, the Cyclone MT, which has AA and a, a, a turret on it, kind of eliminate the need for the AA Cyclone completely. Because <laughs> it's, you know, it's so it's it's one of those things, or like the Rock DS, where you have a second person manning the mining laser and someone driving but the person outside on the mining laser is not protected. So the person inside is still has to, has to drive and play by the rules as being outside um, of the cabin. So like life expectancy and all that on hazardous plants. So you're not really getting anything. And apparently the rock DS doesn't actually mine any faster than the rock. So it ships it, the, the video seemed to focus on ships that really had an odd place. And here's the thing about that. I, I do think that the um, uh, the Antares is one of those ships um, that does fall in kind of an in between, like need niche from you know certain classes of ships. It's kind of like falls in between. Um, it's it's not for the pure combat person, but it's someone who also is wanting to work with a friend, you know, work very closely with a co-pilot. So you, you, it, this, this appeals to a player that's looking for a very specific type of gameplay. And I think that's okay though. I actually think there's ships that do that, that aren't, um, the oddball ships. I would put ships like the Hawk and other ships like that in this category where they really appeal to a very specific type of person. Now, yes. the big issue with that is, is cost. The Cuddy Steel, I agree, totally came at it wrong. It's way too expensive for what you're getting, in my opinion. Yes. But the Antares actually came in a little cheaper than the Scorpius, if I'm, if I'm correct on that. What's the, maybe chat can tell us. Actually, I think it came in a chat. little cheaper. But yeah, I agree. Artificial. There's nothing wrong with catering to a specific audience. And I no. think is, and, and I think that is the case as long as it's a variant that does not require a lot of work from CIG to create. So, okay. $10 bingo said 10 cheaper. cheaper. Yeah. Um, so as long as it doesn't require a lot of stuff to be redone on the model, what yeah. I think CIG does, I'm speculating here, but what I think they do is I think the younger um, artists that come on board their, the ship team, I think their onboarding jobs are ships like the Antares, vehicles like the Mule. They're, they're stuff that the most of the work's already done or a lot of the stuff's in place. They're, they're just, um, you, you know, and the, and the, the tech needs aren't, aren't, aren't piling up on it or anything. It's something that can be pushed out very easily. So I don't think we have so, to worry about the ship team being distracted by ships like nah, the Antares. Nah, this is, this is something that they probably said, Hey, we've got an intern that's got nothing to do. Put yep. him on this. Yeah. Um, the question, yes. did he talk about the Talon and Talon Shrike? In that video, he, he didn't, and and I think the reason was because both ships were apparently two different types of combat gameplay. It wasn't brought up at all at the episode. My issue with the, you know, my issues with the Shrike. It just, I think ships that have pure loadout changes should not be variants. I, I wholeheartedly agree. I even, uh, I'm not gonna lie. Even this, I, uh, personally, I think that. Instead of a variant, and maybe sell it as a variant, but 
they should all have the ability to be changed for a price at Cousin Crows. Yes. Otherwise, you're really wasting Cousin Crows. Malkieri said some people were thinking about the ships as it will be in the future, really solid. I think many are considering how it isn't useful for as second player now. Right. And he's saying he kind of agrees with both. Um, I think I, I, I fall on the side of I'm thinking about the future. I can see where this has its place, but... I'm also of the mindset that 90% of these ships uh, should be something that at Cousin Crows, I can go take yeah. my Hornet. Yeah, it, Diff's is 100% right, like with Hornet variants. Uh, I should be able to take, say, my Hornet uh, and go from the you know F7C to the F7R to the F7M yeah. for a not unhefty fee at Cousin Crows. Well. And, um, yeah, and to expand on that, technically, totally from a lore perspective, they should be able to do it. If Cousin Crows yeah. can out re completely practically change the internals of a crack into a privateer, then they can do some big switch outs on a fighter. Here's here's a thing that CIG could do. Depending on the level of switch out, like if it's an entire turret section, that might be a big change out on a fighter. If mm -hmm. it's just switching out the missile, uh, putting in some missile racks, that may not require much. But here's why CIG does need to do that. Because we are going to need AUEC, or sorry, UEC sinks in this game in the future. We're going to need a place to put all this this this, this money we're making for you know, we're going to need a, an economy. And as much yeah. as we need to be making money, we need to be spending money. Spending and, it. Exactly. And the amount of work you're getting done at Crows and Crows will, you know, will affect the price. If it's a little bit of work, it's a little bit of money, a lot of work, a lot of money. And we're going to need those type of tight, uh, um, cost sinks type of thing, you know, be able to take your Scorpius in, have it switched out to an Antares model. Since that's removal of a turret and the installation of an entire, EMP dampener system, which is kind of a pretty big switch out. If you think of it in realistic lore terms, you're probably bringing in a lot of new electronics, new component bays, all that. Then, um, I mean, from a game perspective, all you're doing is switching from one ship to another. So it doesn't require any work from CIG. But from a, if this was real life scenario, that's a pretty major mechanical switch out on a ship. So price it accordingly. Make it take a week yeah, for the switch yeah. out to occur, you know? I agree. I agree. Um, um, yeah. PQ asked if uh, the Shrike has the same amount of missiles as the Freelancer Miss. No, the Freelancer Miss has 28 size threes. The Shrike has 24. So it's only four difference. Not a huge difference, yeah. uh, but it is a difference. It is something, yeah. Um, um, and cool. the Miss, I think, has way better weapons. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like big old weapons there you can do like size fives if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. yeah uh no dual, dual size three so you might be able to change it out but i don't yeah. know um yeah. real quick um i do want to talk about one final thing um for our show tonight and that is um the engineering gameplay isc we we, we got um the other week um i think essentially it was a design brief. They teased it as a new gameplay loop. And I was honestly thinking it was going to be something new, some silly little thing. The fact that they came at us with essentially the, the design brief for engineering was huge. Um, I immediately put everything else on pause and watched it. Yeah. Um, I thought it was the best ISC in uh, probably a year, <laughs> probably since the resource management ISC. Um, and, yeah, I guess before I go into my thoughts on Ender, what's your opinion on engineering? What do you think of the ISC? Obviously, they went into a lot, um, you know, with the tuner mechanic, uh, you know, engineering manager role. Um, they talked a lot about, you know, everything from malfunctions to, um, you know, general repair to uh, overheating, um, underheating, all that stuff. What, what was your takeaway, like your top level takeaway from that ISC? Um, top genuine top level takeaway. I was going to make a couple of jokes. Yeah. I'll save them. Um, <laughs> this is going to be a gameplay loop that I can't wait to play. Yeah. Um, it's already something that I was like looking forward to, 
Um, I hope that some of the things that they were showing, like us firing ice uh, at an overheating object and us flamethrowering a, a overcooling yeah, some of the visual uh, uh, object. Yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think those were more jokey because right now everything is a bean. Yep. Uh, and I don't think that they are going to be, uh, I don't think <laughs> that they're going to keep it at that. Um, right. But I, I, I do think that this is going to be a very, very fun and enjoyable and um, maybe at times chaotic um, yeah. uh, a gameplay loop that, man, we're going to, we're going to be, Oh, it's going to be rough at times being an engineer. Uh, it, it, it certainly made me rethink what we're currently putting in for fleet builders, for example, for potential uh, uh, numbers for engineers, maybe adding to those is not a bad thing. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, I think you bring up a good point and uh, I think it kind of opened a lot of people's eyes to, uh, to ships, yeah. I I don't want to say medium versus large versus capital or anything, but let's say ships above fifty meters. I I heard a lot of rumblings throughout the community about how it opened sure. their eyes quite a bit on what it's. Again, we always knew that those ships were not going to be just ships you just spawn and fly yeah. by yourself. But I think it brought it you know into focus on what it's going to take to you know require uh, to, to to fully crew one of these ships even something like a star runner or uh, yep. a carrick um you know they mentioned in the um in the engineering isc they mentioned three sort of roles they envisioned the tuner the mechanic and the manager if you take that let's apply it to a capital ship let's apply it to a capital ship that has some real distance to it let's take the kraken okay um, which we just did our, our shipyard episode on the um, the ship is so long you're gonna have to right away you're gonna have to have two mechanics one in the rear one in the front right you're going to hey captain thorn hope you're well salute to you um, you're going to need two mechanics on that ship your tuner who's active at the beginning of when you're getting the ship ready maybe they turn into your second engineer and then you still have that engineering manager back at the consoles in engineering assigning tasks to your mechanics and that's at a bare minimum. I think that's probably what you need to do to just deal with everyday stuff you encounter. If you, however, if you're flying through a system that's lawless, like Pyro or something, and you're taking your big bag capital ship, you're not going to want to risk that with just two mechanics on board. <laughs> I mean, you might want to take five mechanics for all we know. I mean, we really don't know what that's going to look like. Um Something I do think that was interesting that they said, and I want to get your thoughts on this, is that they said, you know, that we were probably going to see this very soon. And I think that is essentially regarding resource management. If you look at resource management, um, while resource management um, is its own thing, in order to turn the knobs on resource management, you have to be an engineer. So I actually think resource management and engineering gameplay go together. I think they're the same thing in many ways. Not yeah. spe- not literally the same thing, but I think they're something that CIG is going to bring on board at the same time because they affect each other so heavily. And if you look at resource management, I think they've got work scheduled out to like September, which I think as far as the, um, the uh, progress tracker goes. But yes. One thing they referred to on this ISC was that it was the you know it was part of the journey to 4.0 series, which means yep. that I think resource management and engineering are going to play a role when we go to Pyro. Now the funny thing about that is is we have heard a lot about py- the Pyro system and these solar flares and stuff. Absolutely, it's, it's interesting that they keep mentioning that too because they have mentioned it a lot, and I think it's they interesting have. that they're mentioning they're mentioning an environmental. Um, threat and then also resource management and how that can affect things i can totally yep. see us being in pyro getting hit by a solar flare and a fire starting out on your ship oh god yeah. you know what i mean i i think it's gonna be very fun for that yeah <laughs> um yeah yeah we're gonna have it's gonna get interesting yeah. fast i think but you know it goes back to what we were saying earlier though there's there's a lot of work that ties into that i think a we're lot. going to need the more advanced building blocks mfds for engineering we're going to need advanced engineering you know displays i think all that interplays and that's why you know with all star system star system development 
a lot of these systems are tied to each other. Resource management, which is being done by a different team than the team working on engineering gameplay loop, they're yep. the, they they go together, you know, oh, yeah. like peanut butter and jelly. And then you got um, the M, the people redoing the MFDs and building block, the UI designers, all that stuff connects back to engineering. So you really end up in Absolutely. a situation where you got a lot of people involved. A whole lot. A whole lot of people. Yeah. Um, I will do a Nikio. Did I say that right? God, I hope so. Um, said something I kind of like seeing uh, pre-flight checklist would be great if you can run diagnostic and pre-flight uh, reward people who take care of prep. I agree well, with that. I think that that would be something interesting. Well, that goes directly to, um, you know, that goes directly to uh, persistent hangers, for example. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to spawn our ship in a hangar that we can be in for an hour if we need to with our friends yeah. doing yeah. Startup tests on the ship, dialing in, tuning those those components, and again, yep. that's what I think persistent hangers or is going to be all about. Or even cousin crows having a section where, you know, it parses you off to somewhere, right. right? Where you can tune your ship a little bit, have some fun, play around with numbers, and just check that and see how it goes. Be kind of um, cool if if cousin crows had like a little area of space above Orson somewhere, maybe, oh, yeah. maybe next to or Alasar's area, mm -hmm. but it's just a cousin crow's kind of like proving ground area. It's an armistice zone, but you can at least get in there, um, and, and kind of test your engine's components. Well, actually maybe it shouldn't yeah. be armistice zone. Maybe you should just be able to, maybe you should go up there and be able to do stuff, but no ship is damaged within it just cause it's, you're testing weapons and stuff could be kind of interesting. Actually, or like dummy I, targets are up there or something. So you're going to laugh, but the game already has a place for weapon weapons testing mm -hmm. and it's Hurston. So like a cousin crows Hurston branch where it's strictly uh, yeah. for weapon testing. I mean, that'd be great. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, real quick uh, to, to hand diffs. Um, don't forget while you will be able to load it by hand, you are going to be able to load it um, using the automatic method. It's just going to take time and, and there's going to be a fee for that. Yeah, um, as it should. But, yeah. I mean, it shouldn't be an immediate thing. The What's going to be cool about manual loading, though, real quick, we're diverging a little bit, but this is kind of related to persistent hangers and stuff. I have seen some people do some really cool stuff in some of the ships. I, I saw in one of the C2s, someone had stacked boxes in a way where they had, they set some out front. And then it, yeah. it was like essentially surrounded in the cargo bay, but there was a hollowed out section in the middle with shooting windows. So you could have people in the cargo bay, <laughs> the C2 that could oh, shoot out pretty fun. and were well protected. So it was kind of yeah, interesting. Um, that's pretty fun. But going back to our discussion, um, you know, again, all that stuff ties into one another. You know, it's, it's hangers, MFD rework, um, engineering gameplay, resource management, and probably, sh oh, and another one actually. You know, this kind of ties into engineering a little bit um, because these objects are going to have power. They've already talked to us about how coffee makers and stuff like that are going are to require power, you know, from mm -hmm. your from your uh, power unit. Um, mm -hmm. So even things like the actor tier two system, the actor status tier two, which is also being worked on the progress tracker right now. You can go look it up. Actor status tier two is a lot like what we have now where, you know, our ability to survive in cold environments is limited. You know, we have to eat and drink, but it's going to bring on a whole new level. Tier two is going to bring on hygiene and a bunch of other stuff. So again, all this stuff's factoring in and, it, and, and this is why when the game's being developed and it seems like some stuff are just taking forever to come out, this is the reason because certain things are tied to other things. Um, all right. So, um, that was engineering thing. I hope we hear a lot more about it as we kind of march towards 4.0. I hope they do updates on this because to me, it was the most fundamental and, um, and like critically important bit of information we've got from CIG in a long time. And mm -hmm. the reason I think they should continue to follow up on this, and I say this as someone who owns some big ships, you know, um, yeah. I own a I own a capital ship or two, and I can tell you right now that for the vast majority of people out there, 
I think they need to know and understand the engineering and crew requirements, which is why I hope we get an update um, from CIG at some point about updated org tools. But they before they go buying these expensive capital ships, I think it would be very good for them to understand what they're getting themselves into, right? Yeah. Um, had had me and Ender not been in Star Jump and have a Star Jump org and everything and have big plans yeah. for Star Jump, I would have never gotten a capital ship because I would have been worried yeah. about staffing it. Yep. But knowing that we're going to push to have a larger org being, being, and being able to get that out with our community and get the message out about that org, a capital ship is very doable. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just something that came to mind. I, I think it would be good for CIG to get some of this information out. So when people drop that $1,500 for Kraken or whatever it is, you're yeah. making that decision with the understanding of what the requirements are going to be. Another thing I'd like them to bring up again that we haven't heard about, it's been about two or three Invictuses that we haven't heard about this because last time was John Crew brought it up again. But they've said that for a lot of these big ships, there are going to be upkeep costs that are pretty prohibitive. I mean, you're going to have to pay. Like, for example, your Kraken or your Idris sitting in a hangar is going to cost you money. There's, there's yeah, storage yeah. fees and all kinds of stuff. And um, you're going to have to be using your smaller ships, your whole seas, your, you know, your, your vultures and all that to be doing your weekly work to earn the money to pay for the upkeep of the monsters, you know, and hopefully mm-hmm. we get the org tools um, through MFD rework and all that. We hopefully we get the org tools that allow us to tax our orgs or to levy fees on org members, you know, maybe, you know, every week, every org member has to put in, you know, maybe it's 5,000 at UEC or whatever to the org bank. You see this in a lot yeah. of MMOs and stuff. And then those, the org bank can then be used for org repairs, org, you know, obviously not reagents and stuff because we don't really have that in this game, but medical supplies, stuff that an org can leverage for, for big operations. So, yeah. 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 Um, all right. Any other thing about engineering, uh, Ender, before we move on, buddy? No, I think okay. I think we covered it pretty well. <laughs> cool. Um, all right, everyone. We're going to get to our um, last thing here, which is our poster giveaway. Um, again, just a reminder, um, you can follow um, on Twitch or subscribe on YouTube, and you are automatically entered in to win one of these. We're going to give away – I previous – Stream said 10 every two weeks. It's five every two weeks. I made a mistake. We're going to give out five every Star Jump Station. Go ahead, Ender. Both Twitches or just the one? Both Twitches. Both Twitches. On on your Twitch, my Twitch, and our YouTube. You three can, chances to win. Yeah, you can enter YouTube. three times. Um, YouTube. Yeah. Um, we have a bunch of these to give away. Um, I will say, too, that for this first giveaway on them, we did random drawing. Um before the show, so we already have the five winners for tonight's episode. Mo- moving forward, though, we want to do those drawings live on air, just because it's a lot funner for the people that were able to show up. The, mm-hmm. the thing that does get a little tricky with that sometimes is we're pulling people from YouTube, we're pulling people from two different Twitches, so bear with us as we get the, yep. the random drawing th- stuff down, but honestly, we thought that because this wasn't like a ship or anything we're giving away that we, we figured people wouldn't care if we just worked on the honor system and pulled randomly um, using the, the random draw tool from stream elements and, and other resources to pull the name. Yep. So that's how we're starting. We will get back to a situation though, where we're pulling um, live. Uh, Diff says you guys can I use gleam or something. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. That, that, that was the um, idea. So let's go ahead and show our first five winners. Um, Reach out to me on um, uh, my email, which I'll give out in a second, or um, through Discord. You can reach out to me any way um, you want. I'll also be reaching out to you as well. But our winners for the first five posters are the following. Hath, Chris Alexander, Pops in Space, Day Hotshot, and Jay Skell. Um, Those are our first five winners. Congratulations. Uh, Yeah. Congratulations, guys. Yes. Um, again, um, Ender just posted the Discord down there. Um, yep. I will also put my the email you can reach out to if you want to contact me, but I will be verifying these. Don't worry. And we have a ton of these posters, so feel free to hit us up. Um, 
Okay. Congratulations to those. I'm looking forward to giving out a lot more of those. And definitely through April, when we go into Ender's Charity Month over on Ender's Channel, we're going to be pushing out. Um, uh, Poutine says those are all his alts. Perfect. Excellent. <laughs> I could send it in one package. Um, cool. Ender, awesome. do we have anything else to talk about before we wrap this episode up? Everyone, I told you this was going to be kind of a short episode. It has yeah. been, obviously. Um, but we will be doing – Let's. can we talk about Fleet Builders real quick? When's our next one? Absolutely. Uh, next one is – not this weekend, but the following weekend, I believe we right. pushed it back one more week. Yes, um, and and real quick, sorry to interject on that. The reason we pushed it back, JMO, thanks for that follow. The reason we pushed it back is because I will be a guest on Soul Citizens this Sunday because we're talking about the Kraken, so they well, figured I was the best the, person to get a hold of. The reason's twofold. So Grim asked me if 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 I was okay pushing it back or if we wanted to do it earlier or whatever. Uh, and I told him, no, it's perfect because right now, as you guys may or may not know, I'm looking for a job. Uh, so it kind of gave me an extra week yep. to focus on that. Um, so yeah, uh, yep. I was very happy to have him put his extremely not so limited <laughs> knowledge extreme vast that's the word i was looking for. there you go knowledge of the kraken uh on soul citizens because it also yeah. gives me a chance to watch him and apply to jobs so. soul citizens constantly jokes that every time they're about to do an episode on something i release an episode on the same thing it's so true about three weeks beforehand <laughs> yeah. this has happened several yeah. times so it's funny we just did the the kraken shipyard episode and then they're doing an yeah. episode on the kraken but at least i can go into it well versed and well educated <laughs> Indeed. Um, everyone, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. I know it was kind of a short episode, but it was so great seeing everyone chat. We actually had a really great turnout, so appreciate that. We had 52 in YouTube and 30 in Twitch. We're still yep. building our audience back, everyone. You know, we we took a, a long, a long break. Uh, from Star Jump Station last year when we finished up Star Jump Fleet Viewer. By the way, go check out Star Jump Fleet Viewer if you didn't already know about that. Starjumpfleetviewer.com or hangar.link. Um, but we took a long break after we finished that project because we were kind of exhausted, to be honest with you. It was a lot of work. Yeah. Big shout out to Starlet and VMXEO, who may or may not be lurking. Uh, without them, that project would have been impossible. So big, huge monster thanks uh, to them. Um, we are working on Star Jump Fleet Viewer updates. Um, we have yes. a list of ships that are going to get updated and brought up to even higher quality standards. Um, Starla is shortlisting a, a set of features we're going to add. Hopefully more definitive information on that soon. I don't want to make any promises right now and get myself in trouble yeah. with uh, Starla. Um, that being said, I think that's going to be it. Ender, um, on the Twitch side of things, are we raiding anyone tonight? Uh, we are. I have a person who I followed recently, really energetic guy, uh, seems pretty nice, and they're doing a Vulture giveaway, so Perfect. see if he's entertaining, uh, give him some love. Perfect. Who's it going to be? His name is The Five Star. The Five, the five Star. Star. Okay. Uh, would you mind linking me to his Twitch channel? So I have. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Linking you in now. Okay. Um, yes. Thank you, everyone. Again, don't forget um, subscribe, follow. Um, we really appreciate it. You're all, you automatically get thrown in the pot for the poster. If the, if you've been like to subscribe for a long time, doesn't matter. If you're as long as you're active on a vid in chat or have watched one of the videos or streams, you are automatically entered. We just pulled from the recently active list. Um, so that's all you have to do, and you're good to go. And uh, again, I have like 500 of these things. So, um, yeah. all right, Ender, are we ready? We are ready. Let's uh, do guys, it. Guys, do some kind for a random stranger. Enjoy this guy. See ya! Salute, everyone.